young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Hey guys, today's podcast is sponsored by Bobcat Company. Check them out at bobcat.com. All right, welcome back everybody. This is the Justin Moore Podcast, and I'm your old buddy, old pal, J.R. The Handler, and on the other end of the Zoom machine today is none other than Mr. Justin Moore. What's going on, J.M.? Good uh, afternoon. I guess it's afternoon. Yes, sir. It's almost afternoon. Um, it's um, it's good to be back with you guys. Uh, good to be here with you, buddy. Um, and we have a, a really great friend of ours coming on to talk with us for a half hour or so today uh lee bryce is going to come on the show today and before we uh go any further just want to say thank you again to parker mccollum for being on yes last week i i heard from friends of mine that they obviously were familiar with uh you know pretty hard as single but uh we're really really impressed by by parker and how well spoken and how together he is and um so i want to thank him but we'll get into some stuff with lee and then we'll get into uh some stuff we talked about with parker uh some baseball the damn braves didn't get it done they're still in it but uh, we get into that get into some halloween get into some softball and football and all kinds of stuff but look forward to having lee on big week no doubt big week yeah uh i i i want to get on first thing i got to talk about on here just before we get started on all that because i know we want lee to be involved in most of these topics we're going to drop uh but just something here at the house you know me just we've been off the road we finally get home and it's just good i just have your little piece of your black cloud is all this it, uh, the whole story goes to and you can my probably know where it's a rain my dark little rain cloud that, that you branched off. off of you and follows me home now uh, so, you know, we've only had a few shots here at being home for any length of time. So this week I had several days. So I thought, man, I'm going to get all kinds of stuff done. Leaves, a lot of leaves have fell. We had a big, lot of wind. So good time to get it tidied up for, you know, fall before I, before we go on this last two week run. So I get out there, I get going, I'm kind of getting everything prepped so I could get the lawnmower going and bag up all the leaves, get the lawnmower going, of course, pull out deck won't turn, you know, I'm, you and I the are the same. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not that mechanically inclined enough to just troubleshoot and fix, but I think I did. I think I figured it out my bearings are just out on one of the spindles that turns my blade, but that totally shuts down the whole operation. So, and you know, I, I've got to leave tomorrow. So Damn. the lawnmower is sitting out here. It looks like I looks like I'm back home in Eclectic when Dad worked on something. It's just open. Parts are all over the ground around it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm just going to probably just uh, push it back over in its hole and. Uh, I finished using the the rake and broom is what, like what I had to do yesterday afternoon. But that's is just, it a riding it, lawnmower? Oh yeah, yeah. John Deere, I love it. It's worked fine uh, too. But you know, it's just something that goes out. But the fact that it would go out this time and not when I've got time to fix it's just par for the course. You know yeah, it couldn't go out in like a week and a half when we're through working, right, like no. for good. Right. Of course yeah. not. Well, speaking it, of, go ahead. I was just gonna say I was trying to get done so we could watch the Monday night football game last night of two, of course. So. Don't get that done. I'm out here watching through the screen porch, still raking in the nighttime. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> While the game's on. Anyway. Did, uh, speaking of uh, being outside and leaves and all that, man, today is like the first day. It's actually pretty cool here. Yeah. I don't know how it is down there, but. Yeah. It's, um, been, it's been chilly last few nights, and uh, it's crisp during the day. Yeah, it's nice. Like, uh, let's see. Like, it's 50 right now at home. Oh, it's not that cool here. I mean, that's that's dropped down. I, I mean, it dropped down in a hurry. Yeah, so, I it's mean, 70, probably 20, it's 70 20 degrees, here. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, 70, it's 71 here. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so, like, yesterday it was probably 70 here. Right, you wow. know what I mean? It's well, just it's wild. Coming, just boom, there it is. And so, Yeah, it's coming. You know how it is. I mean, this is kind of where like where you grew up. Right. It's be 70 and then it'll be 40 and then it'll be 70 and then, you know, you just never know. Down there, well, y'all are more consistently up upper register yeah. there. A lot so. of rain, a lot of rain. But uh, that's good to know because I'm, I'm actually flying up to uh, Arkansas tomorrow, coming out to your house tomorrow it's afternoon. It'll be chilly. Yeah, so I'm going I'm to wear, um, wear pants. Let's see. Good to know. Tomorrow, tomorrow, the high is 48. Wow. Wow. That's brisk. 
and then you know by the weekend it's back up in the 70s but right and, and even the next day the high is 60 so it's like today's the high is 54 tomorrow 48 and then back up in the but yeah well it is halloween 90 percent chance of rain too tomorrow so that should 90%? be fun oh great you're not flying american are you Uh, I don't even know. Because you've be seen they ha- American is going through the same stuff the Southwest did that caught caught up with us yeah. a few weeks back. Oh that's yeah, that's why I'm asking. I need, to look, I need to look into that. That's a uh, that's a good point. I saw a bunch of flights get canceled, but I didn't got a chance to look into it. Hey, I wanted to show you this before we get Leon because he ain't gonna care to watch, look at this. But um, our buddy Brian Parrish out there <laughs> in uh, Instagram world. Uh, sent me this picture, wanted me to show it to you just for Halloween last night. He went as he went as you. Oh goodness! <laughs> hey, and from looks, from from a distance, yeah. with the outfit, he's got it. He's got the yeah, he's got the he's got the look down. He's Canadian a lot tuxedo, better, not a lot better looking kid than I am. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like anyway, it. I thought that thought that was a pretty good one. I didn't. We didn't even have any. Sharice worked Halloween at the Floribama. For the kid thing they have there, a special event thing they have for the kids can come through and do a little trunk or treat type thing and games and stuff across the street. And uh, I was home solo. So me and Lola turned off the front lights to ensure nobody stopped by. <laughs> and we just chillaxed on Halloween this year. Very low key that's, around here. That's terrible of you not to pass out candy to trick or treaters. You know, that's kid, terrible. They don't need. They, they ain't no kids need to be coming up in the yard. It, you know, got stuff. To it's do. Halloween. What are nah. you talking about? You know, it's funny because when we went, we took a walk after that. Um, That's like you going. Kids don't need to be kids. They don't need. Yeah. They don't need to be no. kids. Well, you just don't need to be going to strangers' yard for lights. Ain't no lights. Ain't no come to strangers' yard. <laughs> Especially nowadays, man, it's scary. Uh, stay in the little close neighborhoods. Gr- I saw Grice did. Dr- Grice did something cool. He he got his uh, golf cart and put his. Uh, trailer on it and did like a hayride around their neighborhood for uh, Emily and all their cousins and all their neighborhood people and they dressed up and stuff but they're more you know we we don't have a lot of small kids on our road or anything I actually when Sharice and I walked yesterday um talked to the lady up the street she was getting her stuff up out of her driveway she said did y'all have any trick-or-treaters and Mm -hmm. Sharice like I was at work and I was like no ma'am and she's like we didn't either not a one I was so disappointed Mm -hmm. and I was like dang I was like well we're on the opposite end of the spectrum on that but um, yeah, you're like the old man. Out, Get off my yard! <laughs> yeah. Get off my lawn! Not, not normally. If I would have been prepared for it in a normal situation, I would have. I'd have been ready to rock. I yeah, used to I take did the, the same and stuff. I did the same thing. Like grass, we have a. You know where I live. I mean, you know this, but for the listeners, houses are so spread out. I mean, there's right. no like. It's not like you go into a neighborhood and you ring on a doorbell. You walk over a few feet, ring on another doorbell. Ours is like, I mean, I don't know how many total houses are even in my town. What, sixty houses total or something? I <laughs> yeah. don't. Know. And you got to drive like a half a mile to the next house, and the, it's just right. a different thing. So we do uh, at our church what we've done the last number of years is we do the trunk or treat thing, like you were right. just talking about, and so. I was asked by my pastor's wife uh, to to be in the dunk tank this year. And I'm like, I kept slow playing that answer. And I'm like, it's going to be like 50 degrees. It's going to be chilly. And so long story short, uh, I ended up compromising and bringing my tractor, uh, me and Bradley. I, I brought my tractor he brought a trailer full of hay, and we did the hay ride behind my tractor all around town. So That's I didn't cool. have to talk to nobody. I didn't have to pass out no candy. I was literally sitting in my Bobcat tractor uh, with the radio on, and <laughs> Fat uh, yeah, and uh, and driving kids around uh, town. So I just sat in my That's tractor awesome. with AC on or whatever. Yeah, there you go. So it was actually pretty nice. Kids had a good time and. Uh, we'll get into the the horror that was Halloween this year for you and I, which was the Braves having an opportunity to uh, to win the damn World Series, and uh, we'll but we'll get into that and talk about uh, what's upcoming because in in all transparency, we're recording this on Tuesday the second, I believe. Yep. 
And uh, game six is tonight. Now we're back in Houston. It's not going back to Atlanta. So hopefully they can they can they can win one of these next two games. Hopefully tonight. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Well, uh, <laughs> speaking of what day it is, you know, um, this past weekend you and I went to Hanover, Maryland, which is right outside of Baltimore. We played a show at Live at the Hall, a new venue up there. Uh, I mean, 10, 15 minutes from Baltimore Airport in a big mall, casino <laughs> area, big, nice venue, super modern, <laughs> uh, really cool stage and everything. Uh, great time. Got to see a bunch of old friends. Um, got to see our buddy Frank Lacrone. Got to see big Donnie, but Donnie G. Uh, saw Joey G. Saw Steve. Uh, saw uh, Kurt and and John from the Morning Hangover. Got to see those yeah. guys, and then and a, and a bunch of other people. Got to see the band and crew. We only had a one off, so it was up there and back, but had a good time. It rained. Uh, <laughs> didn't know if we were even going to be able to get inside without a piro at, at one point. Yeah. Um, but good time. What'd you think about the show? It's a cool place, huh? It was actually a super cool venue. If you're up in that area, I don't think that they've done many, if any, concerts yet. I think you mentioned that to me, but um and J, uh, jr you'll have to remind me of the name of the venue but uh or the listeners of the name of the venue but i'm gonna tell you what now it, it is really really a neat spot and there are a few of these live places across the country i know we've done the one in louisville a number of times we just did it recently uh believe there's one in um uh, in kansas city i think that's a live I think um, St. Louis too. I believe I think. St. Louis, yeah. <clears throat> and this one in particular was the first one that we've done that's completely inside. It's an mm. indoor, completely indoor venue, and it was pretty, pretty spectacular. I mean, the amenities, the the lighting, the staging, the video walls. The I I, I hope that I would. I would think that the experience for the the fan is is great as well. I certainly we don't know that, but um, but from our perspective, it's a really really good spot. So if you're in, in yeah. I know they had a comedian coming up after us uh, here yeah. in a week or two or whatever. But I would strongly encourage people to go check out a show there. Yeah, live at the hall in Hanover, Maryland. Yeah, it's like it's almost like a Vegas style um, hotel, casino, showroom place. I mean, it was super nice. Casino was super nice and clean. Really nice restaurants. I had a phenomenal steak uh, the night before you guys got there when I flew in. Met Joey and them. Um, thank you, Donnie G. Um, and then uh, the hotel itself was super clean and nice. I mean, it was nice yeah. all the way around. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, look forward to going back there. Um, I know we locked down some new dates uh, for next year. I'll drop some of those on you guys later. Right now, we're going to take a quick break for our sponsors uh, and partners here on the Justin Moore Podcast, uh, and then we're going to come back with Lee. So everybody out there, remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast when you're interacting with us on social media. I'm Jr. The Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore. We'll be right back here shortly on the Justin Moore Podcast. I want to give a quick shout out to Bobcat Company, who really does make a job, any job that is, easier. They got everything from skid steers to compact tractors, utility vehicles, zero turn mowers, and everything in between. Their products are designed to make your lives easier. I like that. Which means spending more time with your family and doing the other fun things you love. Y'all know how big of a deal that is to me. Make sure you visit bobcat.com to see what products might be a good fit for your property. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas, at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. And Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. And Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy. And uh, see what we got to offer. Shopthislittlepiggy.com. 
Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great. Inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler, because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me, you can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live cowboys and plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. There he is. What's up? What you doing, man? Lebo. Good, how are y'all? Good. Are you on your bus? I am. Where are you headed? On my farm. I'm on I'm on my bus on the farm though. <laughs> oh wow. Oh. Uh, oh, so do you so you just you keep it at the house? Man, I just got home yesterday and I leave tomorrow night hitting the road. Man, we've been we've been spending a ton of time on the road since July. Yeah, it's good. We, we've been saying, man, I'm sure you're in the same boat. We've been saying that, like, it feels like we've done a f- nine, ten month, uh, you know, regular <laughs> tour, but in like five or six months. Yeah, it's it, we have. I mean, that's what we've done double time, triple time. It seems like I, you know, it's been like, you know, it's like gone two weeks home for 24 hours, gone a week home for 36 hours. It's been like that since july so my wife is a little bit like okay i mean she's appreciative <laughs> yeah. but she's at home with all three kids got all the kids at home and so you know it's usually when i'm home i i uh i try to take them off her hands and and uh but it's a lot like when you get the kids these ages it's like wrestling and and they're all at different schools and and they're mm-hmm. all doing different things and it's only one you know and it's just her driving them around it's it's a lot it's full-time buddy yeah, full time job. Yeah, and Lee's like me for those listening and watching. He's super involved, you know, with kids and the, you know, the different activities and the, you know, that kind of yeah. stuff. It's funny you mentioned your wife's like, all right, mine had to, we had the same talk, it, and I'm like, don't you remember back about June, <laughs> May, June? You're going, all right, when do these dates start again? Because you need to get the hell out of here, and so. Now, and but I'm I'm ready to because I I'm you know when we first started I told my manager when we we're booking all these shows I'm like now let's be strategic I I haven't sang like sang sang in a year so you know let's don't do more than three shows in a row and I look up and and week after week after week I'm doing like seven and nine days or something and I'm like damn man you know yeah, so but, I know. I know that. I know that. But you know, we had to we had to jump back in quick. It was it was a little rough at first. When I mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but when I first got in there, I was like, I I was like, I've sang this song a million times, and I'm sitting here trying to think about the words and like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it took a minute, but but we're back in the saddle now, and I've also been trying to build this studio out here at the farm and got it basically done now, and I'm gonna start kind of working on next year. Um now you know working on the set working on you know my records and stuff right here in this studio so um, yeah we're going it's, i mean i'm looking forward to being home through december for the most part i got like one show in december 
That's exactly uh, what we got. Yeah, I haven't had that chance to go hunt like nothing. Yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> I'm like I got to do something for me at some point. <laughs> Other right. than just being on the stage is like obviously like what we what we want to do this for, you know. But being gone that much with families is definitely I'm 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 putting I'm like you I'm talking to them now I'm like look next year, I, this is too important to me my 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 kids at their ages. And what's going on in, in life right now? We got to be strategic about what we're going to book, you know, and yeah. uh, and and why and how and and so because I want to, I got, I, re- I really want to spend some more time with them, you know. And I guess maybe I got spoiled or learned something during during the time of being home with them because it was like you just really see, especially when they get to these are certain ages, how important every little bit of time you got with them matters, you know. I think I saw all that I miss, even though I really make a concerted effort to be home a lot or did even before I saw like, oh, man, I would have missed that or I would have missed that. Yeah. And maybe I didn't even realize that at the time. So I'm, I understand where you're coming from. Hey, before we get too deep into this, just give you a little backstory on what the hell you're even doing, because I know us as artists, a lot of times we just we get we get <laughs> shoved into things and we're like, I don't even know what I'm doing, but I'll just try to not mess up my career in the process <laughs> so we started this podcast when we got shut down because i don't do social media or anything so i was like yeah. i gotta do something to kind of stay connected and yeah. so i said hell i'll just go out in my office and me and jr will just bullshit and get some of our buddies on and if people like it great and if they don't that's great too whatever you know it's free it doesn't yeah. cost anything to do <laughs> except time so that's what you're doing we've been doing yeah. it for Oh, golly, well, almost a couple act- years now and had a ton of, you know, our buddies on and different actors yeah. and athletes and different folks. So I that's what, this so is, anyway, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I believe this is the 70th episode, Lee. And yeah, we, uh, yeah, as you, as you know, out on the road, man, one of the favorite things to do is just BS with our buddies. When you get to be on a show together, when you're on a package show, we get to come on the bus after, or, or just meet up backstage. It just even during the day when you feel like crap, just being able to BS with each other. And then late at night when you're hammered, call each other at two in the morning, all that fun stuff. Well, we didn't get to do that. And we didn't get to listen to music. We didn't get to throw knives at the wall. We didn't get to do sh- We didn't get to do right. nothing. We were stuck at home for, for, you know, all this time. And we were like, we got to do something. I haven't, it was like, I haven't drunk called Colt Ford in like six months. Something's <laughs> got to change here. So, so that's that that in, is, is going along with what Justin said, and yeah, we've been in the same boat as you, man. I think we did sixty-seven shows since uh, middle of June, and then we're just kind of winding down. We we did one show last weekend and two the week before. We're just starting to wind down. Yeah, man. You're, well, I love what you're doing, and I think it's I think it's awesome. And you know, social media. It's it's I don't. I, I don't have it on my phone either, you know. <laughs> so, You're the only you know, other I've artist got, I've, I've heard that from. I literally don't have it on my phone. Me either. Know, at all. So, so I, and honestly, I used to have like one of them on there, Twitter or something. And then I had to get a new phone about a year ago. And it just, I didn't ever did re-download the stuff. And I thought, you know what? This is so much better being able to just, I mean, I'm already got enough on my plate to make phone calls and do all the things I need to do in between yeah. work, in between music and kids. It's like, I really don't have time to, to sit here and social media stuff because it's right. that, that's not really what it's intended for in the, in the beginning. And some, some of it, I, I'm not like, I'm, I don't, I'm not allowing my kids to get on there. Uh, I'm not having it on their phones. There's too much stuff they can be doing. That's constructive. Mm-hmm. The right, Hearing about you know if some kid likes your like or this or that or whatever, mm. um, so I and it's being healthy so far. I mean, my boys like all he's thinking about right now is hunting and wrestling and football and and like he doesn't he's not going oh look at this video on TikTok or look at this video on Instagram or whatever, and and I'm loving yeah. to see what that how that's happening. You know what I mean? And I just I'm just because I know they can make their own decision when they get old enough. But I'd like to show them while they're young enough, and I have the power <laughs> as yeah, daddy exactly. to say, oh, "This is life without without necessarily having to seek approval from all these people and all these people you don't even know." It's one thing to to your parents to yell at you because you're on the phone with your friends, you know, growing up. Get off the phone, son! You've been on the phone too long. 
but they're your friends. They're people that you know. And the and right. like, first thing you do that I noticed that, you know, because he had gotten on uh, TikTok or one of them real quick, like like for a minute. And I was like, why? I said, what's up here? He's like, oh, you know, I just get these funny videos and this and that. And I'm like, and well, who are all these like 1,500 people that you've already found in like a day? He's like, I don't know. I'm like, see, I'm like, you, this is a bunch of strangers, but like, it's mm-hmm. one thing to be hanging out, want to go see friends all the time. So that's what he's doing. He's going and hanging out with his friends. He's going to football camps. He's, he's going to wrestling practice every day. He's talking about shot foot and how he can get stronger for next year. And he's talk, talking about the deer, the deer that are on the camera and what stand and when and why and all that. And it's like, that's I great. love that, you know? Yeah. And so for, for now, I'm kind of down that law around the house, you know, and uh, it's been yeah. nice. It's taken a lot of, for me personally, not having it on my phone, it took a lot of just anxiety and stress. I feel like it, it will cause if you sit there and you catch yourself looking exactly. at something that's like you don't even know why you're doing it, you know? Or getting pissed off about something you read about you, how bad oh. you suck or whatever. And, you know, I'm like, I just eliminated all that. And so it sounds like yeah. you did too. No. And I, I know the feeling, man, my, my almost 12 year old daughter, who's my oldest, I mean, it's almost a weekly occurrence. Dad, so and so and so and so and so and so's got a phone. I'm the only one without a phone. I'm, and so my wife and I came up with the answer to that or the rebuttal. We said, if you can explain to us why you need a phone rather than want a phone, then you can get a phone. And she's yet to come up with that answer. So, um, so yeah, yeah she I, I I get it, man. And and the three of us grew up in a di- different generation. Not only, you know, were we our childhood was different because it obviously wasn't around, but even when you and I and JR also when we started our careers, I mean, we got I don't know years in, 7, 8 years yeah. in before this even became a thing. And then, yeah. you know, the label or management or whoever's going, man, you're going to have to do this. You're going to, have to, and I'm like, I don't do this. This is not, I, I, yeah. I, wait a minute. I'm in the other generation <laughs> who don't do this, you know? So it's kind of funny. It is, but you know, and like, it's, you know, obviously I have the accounts, you know, and, and that stuff. And, and a lot of times I'll try my best if I, you know, cause I'll take pictures of me if I'm out hunting or, or with the family or this or that. And I'll, <laughs> I got all sent over to people who, yeah. who I don't even know the passcodes stuff, and I'll send that stuff yep. over to them. And I, so I still like to for people to be engaged if they want to see what's going on. If I, you know, but as far as me taking my time other than just normal, like what I'd be doing, what I would normally be mm-hmm. doing, I just I can't I can't afford to do it right now. I got too much other on the plate and right now, man. We're we're on a heater, and we're trying to. I'm trying to mm-hmm. focus on on what's going on right now and and uh you know keep it going you know it's hard to get momentum it's hard or hard to keep mm-hmm. it <laughs> it's hard to keep it really hard to keep it no doubt about that man so hey we, uh, I was, well i was just gonna say talking about that lee on top of being busy out on tour man you stay busy i know from being on the road with you because we did the american made tour with you a couple years ago which was awesome loved your bunch great bunch of guys still talk to philip and wayne all the time uh but um you're always doing music. I mean, you guys would record music after the show. You'd record your own shows during the night, all that stuff. And then since then, I mean, you had that huge, I mean, one of the biggest, the biggest song of last year. And then now you've already got a new, a new single went number one. And then you've got another one, a duet out now. Um, so you just busy on top of being on the road. You're busy studio and putting out material. I mean, just steady. Just trying to keep that momentum, man. That's all it is, you know, and we work on the road because again, when I come home, I only got two or three days at home at the most or something. I don't want to have to go back to the studio again. So that's why I built this studio here on the bus so that I could take that downtime that I do have on the road and utilize it, get a lot of that work done. That studio work can get done on, on like just a small studio. You know, you don't have to, but I mean, I'll, heck I got drones and stuff. I pull out, we do kind of the whole deal out here at times, you know, and, um, it's just, it's a good thing to be able to knock that work out so that when I do come home, I can be home, you know, and not go back yeah. to a studio and going. So, Sarah, you know, I, it, it may, it really helped me out balancing a little bit more, you know, uh, yeah. even before the pandemic, it started to teach about being able to balance. It, it helped me balance the family and the road. And well, I'll say that it because vibe of the road, too, you know, having that, that, that mojo that's going on while you're out there, too, has got to be cool. Oh. The creativity of that, you know. 
it's way it's way cooler because in the moments I write a song and then I can track the whole thing with the band right here. I set up drums, set up B3, set up bass, guitar, and we'll literally track it like we're in Nashville. And yeah. that way the song is new, fresh, it feels energetic. So you're getting the mojo while you got the mojo. You know, it's hard to come back to a song some time ago and get that same mojo you had while you're writing it. And if you lose it, sometimes you lose a song, you know, and that's that's not that sucks because you, you sit here and work hard on a song and, you know, and and so that's why I love doing it. I mean, I love to be able to, to just say, go hit record right here, right yeah. now. There's a band closet. There's a guitar. There's a harmonica. I got everything you need to have fun out here and. And uh, and the band we get in here and we play so it's not just us playing on stage right the same yep. songs we can hear other music together all the time and that's just just good for them uh, me and all us and then they're getting basically studio time and you know I got great players and they're yep. and they're learning we're all learning more and more about the studio the older we get and the better the better we get in the studio and so because it's two different things you know mm -hmm. playing in a studio and playing you're playing you know live is two completely different things it's like checkers and chess and and uh uh they're learning that and and i i think we're uh you know it's, it's cooler because now i can bring them in when i am going to do like a real live session and say do some stuff for the record you can look back on a lot of my records and i've slowly but surely started incorporating them in on song you know here person there a couple of them on this song you know you know, I play, I did everything like I don't dance. I think it was my, my it was myself, and then it was you know my whole band. I had them come in, and you know, and so we've we've learned. I've got them more and more part of the records, you know, because that's my sound. You know, it's my band, yep. and but mm -hmm. it's sometimes hard, sometimes hard to do that. Uh, you know, whenever you're you haven't done a lot of studio work, you know, and so they've grown so much, man. They've become killer players, even not just live, but in the studio, which, which in turn, whenever they get on the stage, they even sound better and bigger, you know, because they, those little things you learn in the studio, you take them back to the live stage and it's like tight, tight, tight. Yep. So it's been fun, yeah. man. Yeah. And each help the other, you know, I mean, yeah. so, 100%. but, and your band guys just absolutely love that too. You know, I've been fortunate to do some of that also, um, as far as incorporating them on albums and records and stuff. And it's such a yeah. great thing to be able to do. And it, you know, it's something that, you know, I'm sure you're in the same boat as me. You've probably wanted to always do, but you, you know, you kind of alluded to it. It's a whole different animal, one from the other. And so you, there is a learning curve there, but uh, but the other thing Lee won't tell you, but I will because he's too humble. Like the other reason you can do this stuff on the bus and that kind of stuff is because he's supremely talented. I mean, you are, and and you have a great ear for these things, and and you're a great player yourself. Uh, you know, like for instance, my me, I'm not good enough to play on a record. Lee is. Uh, you know, play, play, you know, and so um, that makes a difference also, you know, you having that kind of producer's well, a ear lot, a and lot mind of that, and I mean, that a lot of that really came from experience more than just, you know, like being talented. I, I started, started recording myself when I was, as soon as I started writing and singing, you know, like I was writing songs when I was nine and 10 and I was like, well, I got to record them. You know, I was thinking if I'm going to I thought when I heard George Strait on the radio, I thought he wrote everything, produced everything, played all the instruments. <laughs> My brain told me, so I thought, well, if you want to be a singer, you got to learn to do all that. So you got to be the engineer, you got to be the producer, you got to be the, yeah. the player, the band. Yeah, that's the, him playing. Yeah. yeah, that's him playing those licks. <laughs> yeah, right. I, that's what I thought in my little brain, and so. It drove me immediately to go get my little singalodian thing that the with the two tape decks in it and record a, my guitar into it, you know, and, and then overdub it onto another tape and play it back and sing to that and put another guitar on top of that. And then it started getting his ear and his ear. And then I ended up learning when I was 15 and 16 and 17, started learning how to run, you know, run Pro Tools. Well, I actually wasn't Pro Tools, it was like, you know, cheap versions of like recording programs, you know, and, but I learned how to do that stuff. And I, so over time, you know, over that, mm -hmm. over now, I, you know, I guess I'm, I guess I'm over 40 now, which is crazy. I can actually sing. I have to, to go backwards when I'm singing 
blues man and actually not <laughs> sing at a younger age. But yeah, um, <laughs> I used to have That's to like funny. lie the other way. Now I'm having to lie the other way. <laughs> I'm yeah. over thirty years old. <laughs> when when you're like twenty nine, when you're twenty nine, you say you're over thirty. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm over twenty years old now. You know, but, <laughs> that's uh, funny. There's a lot of those songs nowadays. You and I are the same age. We're you're only a few months older than me, but that's funny because there are a lot of those songs, like the uh, the Charlie Rich song about my fr- uh, uh, <laughs> rolling with the flow. I mean, all those songs. You got to change it. Cause you're like, well, I'd pass that. I'd pass that decade of my life. Whoops. Oh man, I can't believe that. I mean, I, I I actually thought about it last time I randomly pulled that song out. I was like, crap, I used to have to go, I'm almost 30 years old now. Now I'm going, well, now I'm like way older than, the, than Hank was when he was in the hall, you know? That's, that's funny. That's uh, funny. It's so you, true. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so what's, uh, new music-wise, what's what's the deal? So I know. We, uh, I know. Uh, Girls was huge, obviously, and yeah. I and swear, every song. time I hear a song of yours on the radio, every time, I'm like, I mean, that is just. I mean, first listen every time, and I may have told you this while we were on tour. I'm like, I mean, it's just a monster. It just is a monster. <laughs> I mean, every. I'm like, God, it's please. true. Man, well, you know, you you know the competition is out there now, man. It's yeah. like it was always competition and a lot of people working hard to do this. Now it's like any Joe blow out there with a computer or a phone or whatever can go make a record and they can try to stick, stick their foot in the door. And they really, Mm -hmm. some of them do. It's just, there's so much out there that for me, it's always been like, I have got to bring the best of the best every single time Mm -hmm. or else I don't have a shot at this thing, you know? And, JR and I had a conversation about that uh, recently on the bus, but I didn't want to interrupt you. Go ahead, though. No, not at all. That's, that's, you know, it's like, it's just too much competition. It's, you know, and it's, I'm all, you only get, we only get one shot at this for however long we can do it. And so I figure, and that's why, you know, I love to write, right? I've been writing since I was a kid. I can write a good song any day of the week. You know, I could, I could get lucky and find those little magic songs on certain days. But I also, you know, it's all about those songs that are like, like the bar is set way, way, way up. Like from the stuff that I grew up loving, like the greatest songs that I've ever heard. That's what I shoot for every time I write. But I also have to put my ear kind of old school. I don't know that a lot of younger artists do this anymore because they just go sit down and write a song with whoever's already been writing for 30 years. But, but. I love to go listen to songs in town, man, because these writers, so many still amazing, so, just mm-hmm. songwriting, and no so doubt. many amazing songs that I think you're so silly. I don't care if you're James Taylor. I think you're silly if you're not going around and listening to mm-hmm. songs because I found I drive your truck that way. I, try, yeah. I found Boy that way, Drinking Class that way. So I'm not afraid now Let's don't talk about board. drinking class. Let's don't talk about drinking class. <laughs> <laughs> my wife oh, yeah. <laughs> we've had this conversation right you know what you should have done is we should have done it like like uh trisha and uh leanne rhymes did with that <laughs> song they both they, they had out two different versions at the same time and they both went number one yeah could you imagine no my wife <laughs> is pissed at me to this day about that song <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, tell me that. so, just so you guys out there listening know that may not, I I was recording my or I was getting ready to record my third album, and this was probably twenty twelve ish. Is that about when? Yeah, that, and maybe and so, somewhere in that area, and I probably had it on hold in twenty twelve. But uh, so I had this song on hold forever, and I I had another song that they were. Somewhat similar, at least I thought. And I went with a, <laughs> a different one. My wife kept going, no, you need to record that one. You need to record that one. You need to... Well, hell, it was drinking class. So the day <laughs> that I let it go from holding it, I mean, I don't know if it was 25 minutes. Lee, uh, my producer, calls me, uh, which you know Stover. He calls me or texts yeah. me. He goes, he, he goes, 
Lee just put that song on hold, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And so I knew I, I knew right at that moment, I go, that's going to be a big record. Right yep. that second. But, I mean, we all have those that we've either gotten from somebody or we've lost or we passed on, oh, and we're going, why the hell did it? I mean, we all have those stories, but you, when you mentioned it, it made me uh, think of that story. And then, and then of course – Obviously, you guys out there listening know that song went on to be a huge hit for Lee, and it's huge live. So when we were on tour together, getting to hear him sing that live every night and watching the crowd lose their minds, I'm going, oh, man. Yeah, I, we all do have those stories. You know, some of those stories regret, you know, like that. You know, you go, God, man. You know, like I got one to where I actually sang a demo for Ashley Gorley. Which, when I when I got my deal, on, great I kinda, songwriter. I didn't do a lot more. I didn't, yeah, he's an unbelievable songwriter, and so we kind of had this thing to where I still wasn't making no money. I was on the road, <laughs> had records out, but I, I had a record out, and so I didn't really sing demos anymore. But he would call me about once a year right before Christmas. He'd be like, "Hey, you want to sing? You want to sing a couple demos?" And I'm like, and he'd always. Pull out a big wad of cash. He, he, he's got all that money from writing all them hits. <laughs> he pull a big wad of cash. And he said, all the songs that you can, you pick whatever you want and sing them. And he said, I'll, I'll give you X amount of hundreds of dollars to sing each one, however many you want to do. And I, I'd pile up a little rack of money to help me get through Christmas. Well, there you go. anyway, I went to the demos. I went to a session. I said, all right, Ashley, let's sing these. And I said, here, I'm, you know, we'll sing this song. And I remember I sang this song for him. And, uh, and I remember loving it as I was saying it. And I didn't say anything about it at the moment. This is in the evening, okay? This is about probably five or six, you know, in the, in the afternoon. And I went home that night. And the next morning, very first thing, like probably nine o'clock, first thing for me, because, you know, I was probably out till two or something. <laughs> but yeah. I, nine o'clock that morning, I called him and said, hey, Ashley, I said, that song, I said, one of those songs I sang last night, I said, man, would you, could I put that thing on hold, you know, because I mean, I had, I was doing the thing, you know, and he said, oh, man, he said, I literally pitched the bounce of it last night with your scratch vocal on it, and he said, I just, I sent it straight over, and he said, he said, I just, because they were asking me about a song, and I randomly sent them this song, and it literally got put on hold last night by Jason Aldean, and then Jason Aldean cut it like a week later and put it out on the radio, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. So, I'm, I mean, I'm, oh, I, you, you just you sleep on it for one second. It's kind of like a, a house or something in Nashville. Something comes up for sale in Nashville. Yeah, right. Like, you, it, you better call it right then. Right. <laughs> so what was the song? It was, it was uh, Laugh Until We Cried. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, man. I love right. that song. I like, yeah, I did too. And, uh, and so anyway, but then there's also others though, that's like the other way around. And it's like, I've been right. pitched many songs to where I was like, you know what? This sucks because the song, I, I, this song sounds like a hit to me. Like, I know it's going to be a hit for somebody, mm -hmm. but for whatever reason, it just didn't resonate with me as a singer or as a person or as a, just whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, man, I had to pass on them or this or that. And, and. Um, and so, you know, it, it comes out and somebody else records it and it's a hit and you're kind of like, I mean, you, there's a piece of you that's a little bit like, man, maybe I should have, but then, there, but if you're being honest, if you're true to yourself and honoring yourself, it's okay. You know, that's just, that's, that's what I've always done is try to stick, really stick to those guns mm -hmm. of the types of songs I'm going to put out. And I know you have too, you know, there's a sound and there's a, there's a, there's the man that you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it didn't always regretful, I guess, you know, yeah, it's, no, sometimes I, it works I, out sometimes it does. A hundred percent agree with that. And I was going to say before you added that last little bit that that shows uh, how genuine you are as an artist and how honest you are with the fans as an artist. You're not going out and going to cut something you don't believe is A, great, and B, you, which yeah. – and the fans, and you know this as well as I do, they can cut through the BS. I mean, oh, they yeah. can tell they, if we're if we're just going out there playing a part, they can see right yeah. through it. And oh yeah, you know, they, I, they you really, know, you, you don't always hit it out of the park. Not you, but as an artist, you don't always hit it out of the park. But you're at least your mindset is trying to do that and be honest about 
who you are as an artist, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a well, really I good point. The same way too, because it's like, I mean, you're not, it's another, another even just simple thought in the whole thing. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. You hear something you're like, well, that's a hit, but do I want to see, what if it is, if, especially if it's a hit, like I, like it sounds like, what if it's a hit? And now I'm going to be singing a song every night, the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. You got to think about that. You're going to, you're going to sing a song every night, the rest of your life. You better love it. Mm-hmm. Whether you yeah. wrote it or whether somebody wrote it, it don't matter. Yeah. Whether it's a hit, whether it's not, if, if it becomes a hit, be ready. Cause you're going to be singing it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I look back on my career, my first single, I'm kind of glad it was not a hit. Um, <laughs> to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> But, oh my god yeah I got a couple of yeah, white but, out of you're like you know at the at the time you're going dang and now i'm looking back going oh, that's probably a blessing in disguise but uh, yeah you know. hey I, i'll say that's uh you both you guys uh do that very well and this is coming not from jm's tour manager but just as a country music fan and historian that i am uh but that's why you guys both stay in business because you are true to your fans and like, they'll see right through that bs if you're not and that's why y'all aren't one hit wonders that's why you've both been in business for a long time and don't see any signs of slowing up and uh, i'm glad to know y'all both and i think uh for anybody out there listening again to that i I've heard them all sing live on uh, records and all that, everybody there's ever been. And these are two of the finest living country music singers uh, on the planet right now. I'll tell you all, all that. That's a true story. And I ain't trying to butter you all up. I don't need to. But uh, let's. Uh, I know we ain't got a whole lot more time with you, Lee. I want to move uh, move gears here. Let's talk a little sports if you guys want to. We're all big college football guys, and we're all uh, Deep South Braves guys. So let's uh, let's just get that fired off. I, for, before we go anywhere else, I've, I've actually been wanting to text you, but I'm like, I'm not going – because I always te- – so Lee played, for those out there who don't know, Lee played for Clemson football. You, long snapper, right? Yep, center. And, in center. And so um, I think right around the time we were on tour together, they were in the national championship uh, maybe the year yeah, before beat and the us. year after or yeah, something like that. Yeah, of course, I had Bama. the only only person in country music that's a huge Clemson guy. That's who we had to tour with the year we lost yeah. the national championship yeah. was the Lee's team. <laughs> and I don't remember if I, I don't remember if I texted Lee or called him or something. And you just were you were at the game when you won. So I got to ask you now, since things you know it's just one year, but what's uh, what's the deal with the with the with the team this year? Because they, expectations were super high with. Uh, the quarterback coming back, yeah. um, and I, they're young, right? I mean, is that man really simply that? Not, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I can see it now watching watching the quarterback DJ. Well, I saw it the very first game. There's honestly, I mean, I, so they were Bama and Clemson were recruiting the number one and number two quarterbacks, right? And Clemson <laughs> took. DJ, who, who's like 6'6", six, six, you know, 255 pounds, you know, a big, mm-hmm. strong, and an arm like crazy, right? And I'm, and I'm sure they assumed, you know, we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to, you know, teach this kid to be a, gr- a greater quarterback than he already is, you know, in high school, you know, mm-hmm. because of his size, strength, and Bama took the smaller, you know, guy and i was like i don't wonder why they did that well now watching dj it's like i just see so many in the very first game you know i see and this is technical stuff but it it matters so much you know it just stuff that you can't do at this level man he just is not doing it like he'll he'll stand there with his feet just planted in the ground staring down a receiver forever and either he makes a good throw you know but everybody sees it's coming, so they get in front of it because he's staring it down the whole time, or he makes a bad throw. And and bad, and I just I, – I watched it the first game, and I go, you know what? I said, they need to take him out. You know, we got two more five-star recruits right behind him. I said, oh, we're right, going to start yeah. losing games. I was like, you can take him out. At worst-case scenario, you take him out, and it lights a fire under his butt, right? You know, right. and maybe makes him re- figure out what's going on and get back up there. I mean, that's kind of how it should always work. Well – I still do not know. Like, I know Dabo pretty well. I mean, and he's an amazing well connected. coach. You know, he's an amazing coach, an amazing dude. Like, he's the kind of guy literally makes you want to be a better person when you hang out with him for five minutes. Like, he's just yeah. that guy. Well, but I 
I still don't know. I don't know if like the mafia has got something on him or what. I mean, <laughs> because this quarterback should have been out of the game a long time ago, and we're still and and he's still in there. The first time they took him out was was a week ago. That's six games in or something, seven games in. Mm-hmm. Then it was the third quarter out for about two plays, and I was like, I just can't understand because right now you can't have any type of team or our offense without a quarterback you know that can that is doing the right things at least and so yeah that's our i think our main issue has been the quarterback and you can you can people start or you know like well play call and this i'm like man this is the same play callers that beat bama that's taking us to the uh, to the playoffs every single year since they've had playoffs mm-hmm. i mean that's not the problem you know and, and i so i don't actually know why they haven't try to make the changes or do something to get it stirred up, you know, unless they just after the, you know, you lost two games, you're like, well, let's just get everybody healthy. Now we did have a lot of injuries all over the place. I mean, we were literally, we had like 11 dudes. They were all major starters Mm. out, you know what I mean? Like, but still we have so much depth like a Bama or like a, you know, some of those teams that 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 really, didn't matter so much, right. you know, because mm-hmm. they've had much experience in the games where we were winning fifty to nothing. They've got to play whole halves and whole, so they've got right. so the guys yeah. right behind them, and, have and they were four and five and stars. So I mean, that's yeah. right. A team like that, but you do have to have a, a core. You have to have a man that's going to touch that ball every time and get it done. You know, make good decisions and make good throws. And honestly, I've just seen none of that out of people. Just, what's so what's so wild know, about that, Lee, is that he came in. I know he played one game, if not more, last year. It might have been a couple, two or three games. Yeah, and killed it and crushed it. He, so, he, I yeah, mean, he came right. into the year as I mean, honestly, a Heisman hopeful. I mean, yeah, he did, and so he did. And I, but watching him, I don't know if it's Ed. I don't know if it's maybe that's why. I mean, see, see. Dabo is a very devoted kind of a guy. He's a good dude, so he's probably – maybe he's really is just going, man, we got to get him out of his head. we got to get the athlete that we know he is, and yeah. maybe that's what they're doing. Sticking, Sticking with their guns. gun. Yeah. Hey, maybe but it pays off next year. Who knows? I tell you, it does, but, but it I wouldn't be making – I wouldn't be making any uh, touchdown predictions as you're flying in on the jet uh, next year, though. Let's let's save those. That's like the guy who says he had missed a free throw all year. Let's, uh, let's uh, wait till after I shoot yeah. it. You know. Yeah. Hey. So th- that being said, because Lee knows college football, I mean, he played it. I mean, he knows it well, and he knows the the current landscape. I mean, it, you who you like Georgia to win it all, like so many I mean, other people, or probably um, because you know. They have all the things we just talked about, you know, and they've had well, – I would always think a team needs, even if you're Bama or whatever, and you'll agree with me, JR, it's good to have either a loss or at least some games that push you to, like, get scared and understand that you're not a – you're not a robot. You are human right. and you can be beat and you got to up and play every game, you know, no matter how good you are. Yeah. You got to step up and play every game. So, like those tests, when you get yeah. tested, whether it's a loss or whether it's just a big test, gives the coaches opportunity to coach them up you too. That's, you know, if you got players, a big win, kind of, you don't get a chance. Yeah, that's right. If you teach it, but it also teaches a player to go, not take it for granted, go out there and play hard every time. And Georgia, you know, they've had a couple tests, but they've they've prevailed and they've been honestly, they've been. We've all seen them, you know, kind of the last few years really just kind of coming up that depth chart of, of those major teams, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, uh, you know, Georgia's always been Georgia, always, always strong football team. It's like, but they have really grown the last few years and man, they just got some talent this year. I mean, there's some, it's weird to look at the top 10 and see some of these teams. You're like, I mean, if that team was playing Georgia, I don't think they'd be still be ranked number two or right. whatever, yeah. you know, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. But also, some of those teams have been ha- had flawless seasons for a couple of years, and so got to give them a shot, I guess. You know, right? Right. And the SEC consumes itself, so I mean, if any of those teams were yeah. in the SEC, probably not going to be in the top anything. Right. And then here we've got, yeah. you know, 
Ole Miss put to the test and, you know, and this, and then Auburn comes out of nowhere and beats them. And, I mean, we're just, you know, I still – and I'm like you. I, I almost think – I mean, I, obviously I wish we wouldn't have taken the L earlier this year, but I think that gives – it's hard to coach them up after a 54-zip win, but, you know, if, like that was – I always think that was saving. If a close, you know, a tight game, that's going to give him a chance to really coach them up the next week and a loss even more because then you got things to build on and let the coaches really do what they're supposed to do. Uh, but it's uh, it's just it's just tough, man. The SEC just gets tougher and tougher every year, and um, and, and then and and same with you guys over there. And then everybody plays these interconference stuff with with big teams. So it's uh, it's it's just a uh, it's really interesting this year to see how how everybody's moved up and down and who's there now. And and when it's all said and done, it might be a completely different. Who knows? But I I'm with you. Georgia complete, looks like a very complete team. I still like our chances, but Georgia, buddy, that defense is big and fast. And I mean, good gracious, yeah, that defense yeah, is nasty. You never, you never count. You never count Bama out. You know, you got. I can't imagine being one of the players for Bama after that loss. Oh Lord, I bet that week, <laughs> buddy. I bet that. I bet they know. were. I bet Lord yeah. have mercy. And but, I still. I mean, I st- say, they, he'll be yelling if they're forty-five to uh, nothing up, and he'll still be yelling, "You missed this one block." You know, it's yeah. like, but that's how you gotta teach. Yeah, you know? that's why he's great. Yeah, you know? and yeah. I still just to wrap a bow, tie a bow on this conversation. I, I still want to see. Georgia have to do something on offense when it absolutely matters and their back's against the wall. We haven't seen that this season yet. You know their defense can do it. Yeah. Haven't seen their offense do it. And I, I still want to see that before I pick them over Alabama in the SEC championship because I hadn't seen it. They haven't had to do it because that they've is, been doing their job. That, that is the truth. That is a very good – that's why if Georgia, you know, had had to do that already, it would be a nice experience to have under their belt, you know, but they don't have it in that moment yet, that hard moment where you got to get it, period, stamp back yeah. against the wall like you said. That's important experience to have whenever it comes. And then all of a sudden you're playing Bama in the championship or whatever, and you're going – And that butthole shrivels up they, when it's close. I, yeah, yeah, I promise you, Bama ready. You know what I mean? I promise you. They, they, they are back against their wall. They're going to bow up, and you better be ready, Georgia. And I'm as good as you are. I mean, Georgia is not going to run away with a game from Bama. You know what I mean? They're not going to do mm-hmm. that. So they better be ready for a challenge, you know, on, on the, these in these cu- coming weeks. But, uh, yeah, I mean, college football, though, isn't it great that, like, you know, pros, you know, you can kind of like – they're so good. You can almost – call those games you can really call a lot, lot of it anyway the, the, how you know you really can tell how good right. a team is and you know really in college it's, it's kind of like it's really one of those any given team can beat any given team on any given day you know and i love that about college football um but right now it looks like georgia's hard to beat now bama's always looks hard to beat you know like almost impossible but it's not impossible we just saw it you know what i mean we see mm-hmm. it and we've it through the years and and uh uh, but yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting to see how the rest of the season plays out, and then, and then like the last you know the last week or so, man, it's been how cool has it been being where we're from? Well, see where I'm from in South Carolina, we never had a professional team of any sort. Same okay? Alabama, Arkansas, same. We never had a professional team of any sort, so we were Braves fans. That's right. it. we were close. To we had we were Braves fans. Okay. And then on top of that, through the 90s is when I was, like, old enough to really get what was going on. And it was, like, it was golden years, you know. And I knew every player and all the – I mean, everything. You know, they were into all the stuff. And to see, them, to see them back, you know, right now, it's been pretty exciting, man, to, to watch yeah. it. Now, the other night, boy, I, I saw that, that score in the first inning. I was like, mm. I was like, that's not – I was like, don't get your hopes up, y'all. I'm telling you, this is when things get hairy. It, it, it always seems to happen. I got broken hearted. And you just you just laid out the perfect uh uh scenario for JR and myself too w- with our our childhood and and we've actually said the same exact thing as to why uh we're Braves fans and how pride you know, how our chests are puffed out, you know, over the last <laughs> two or three weeks and um so yeah I, I we figured you were a big Braves fan so we were going to get your perspective I boy I I was uh I was disappointed the other and baseball is my favorite sport uh but uh so I was I was pretty disappointed the other night and I knew I'm like man 
I know we're up 3-1. I know things are going well, but I do not want it to go back to Houston. Then we get up 4-0 in the first inning. I'm like, you've got to find a way to close this game out. You got to do it. Yeah. And now That's now I'm at. just I'm I'm like, "Oh no. No, 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 no." You know, and we're just conditioned as Braves fans outside of one year to be disappointed. You know, it, yeah. it kind of parallels my uh, my fandom in, in college with Arkansas. It's like well, I'm just conditioned as a sports fan just to be disappointed completely. Hey, what so, I tell you, I, I, we had Rhett on uh, uh, last year, I think it was, Lee, and Rhett had the best one ever. He said as a Georgia, <laughs> as a guy from Georgia, he said, when I die, I want two Atlanta Braves, two Georgia Bulldogs, and uh, two Atlanta Falcons to be my Paul Bear so they could all let me down one last time. <laughs> I thought that's classic Reto right there. He's daggum right, boy. He's I tell you what, there's a reason why he's in the Songwriter Hall of Fame. No doubt. Yeah. No, no doubt. doubt about it. Hey, before we get you at so what do you well, what do you think happens? You think we uh take care of business or you think we're broken hearted? I, I have a good feeling about it. I don't know why, mm. but I have a good feeling about it and Usually, these gut feelings of old Lee Bryce are right. So, that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to call it. I like it. I you like know, it. I, did, I, I had a gut the other night when it was when we was 4 nothing. I thought, I thought, I had a gut feeling. I was like, this is everybody in the world right now is thinking mm-hmm. it's over. And I went, nope. I, said, I knew. I knew. So I just had that. Like you said, there's mm-hmm. that thing inside you going, nope, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Even yeah, up yeah. 4 nothing. Exactly. Well, before we get you out of here, because we've taken up too much time, but we talked about how when we were on tour, we talked about before you came on, and we walk because we hung out after the shows and stuff like that uh, for people listening, and that's not always the case, but we're buddies and, and friends, and so we did, and um, we walk up one the, like one of the first nights on tour, and of course we're all uh have having cocktails and all that kind of stuff and and lee is standing up slinging knives at the wall of his bus i mean like he's throwing uh, a foot Ninja stars <laughs> yeah. i mean and i'm going what in the hell is going on here and i sucked at it by the way but how in the hell did that yeah, start well, I, and are you still well, doing I that like, I, I like throwing knives and so behind me this is actually pallet wood that's covering up the holes in that wall uh this is the same <laughs> wall we were throwing at but i threw one we threw a little thing out of pallet wood yeah i had to cover it up with like a piece of art it's pallet wood but um, i love it yeah that was my i love throwing knives but um I, I, a tv got chipped and some other stuff like that i got tired of paying for stuff like that so i, I stopped throwing knives on the bus at least yeah, that oh, that God. that night, that time, there was nothing up there. It was just the regular wall of the bus, and y'all were just throwing knives in it. I, and I remember I, I threw I threw one, and it was terrible. It bounced off the wall, clicked into something. You looked at me like he's about to rip my dang head off. I was like, shit, I ain't been practicing, Lee. But you and Enzo's just sitting there laughing, and you're taking them like Justin said. You're it's not like you're just tossed. I mean, you're slinging them. What did I? What did I? And I mean, it was it was awesome. I was like, yeah, because Justin and I, I mean, we 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 rage, we tear our bus up some too. So I mean, I get it. Hey, but look, we've we'll all seen we've we have all seen. We're not going to get into it. We've all seen some wild scenes on a tour bus now. <laughs> hey, yes, sir. But that might have been the wildest for me because it was. You, you can imagine the like the 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 shock if you didn't know what you're walking into. You know. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, what's next? We're gonna start target practicing funny, up here. Well, uh, I don't remember it. I don't know if y'all remember. Now, we have shot bows, bows, like put the target in the front of the bus and shoot from the back lounge, you know, practice bows like that. Oh, no. But, <laughs> <I'll be back. laughs> but, uh, but you know, what was funny knives is the owner of all the buses was on the, on the bus, on the bus that night. Yes, I remember and so, that. And, and so he, and so, because they saw me actually throwing it into the wall and like not making a mess other than the holes in the wall. He thought it was actually kind of funny. They thought it was kind of cool. They're like, you know what? Okay. We see now it's, it's pretty entertaining. <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't get checked quite so much. That's, That's funny. funny. 
Well, yeah, that's we, what I was going to say. I was going I was actually going to say you don't have to worry. I'm sure the the owners of the bus company don't listen to this podcast. So. <laughs> yeah. But they were already there. They're already aware of it. So I remember that right now. There. They were actually there. Yeah, yeah. I know we got to let you go, Lee. I got two things I want to drop on you though before we cut you out of here today. One is what we do is the number one song in country music on the day you were born. So uh, for me, I'm a nine eleven seventy nine guy, and uh, my song was "I May Never Get to Heaven" by Mr. Conway Twitty, and Justin is a three thirty. Justin's a three thirty eighty four, and his was Alabama's Roll On eighteen wheeler. Yeah. So, does anybody want to take a stab at what uh, June tenth of seventy nine, which would be Lee's birthday? Uh, anybody want to take a stab at what the number one song in the country was that that week? And I'll give y'all a hint. Okay. I'll give y'all a hint. The hint is this is something both of y'all have said about your wives to other people, or possibly in a song. And it's by one of the uh, biggest, but I'll let you guess first. Biggest, one of the biggest superstars of all time in country music. I'm trying to think of the ages, because <laughs> you know when you're born, you're not listening to the radio. So like when right. you have to think about that, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, now I got to think back before I was born, before I started knowing. Gosh, that's a tough one, bud. I, mean, I was going to say I, when we get behind just, closed doors. No, no. But one of the biggest, exactly. one of the biggest, I mean, crossover, whatever you want to call it, one of the biggest country stars of all time, probably grossing wise, been in movies, been in TV, been in everything. The song is by Mr. Kenny Rogers. Kenny Rogers. What song? And the song, and the song is She Believes in Me. Oh, my God. Uh, I did not know that. She yep. believes in me. I bet. I bet. I was gonna say. I bet both y'all sing the snot out of that one too. If y'all, if y'all got your mixture right. Well, I, I, yeah. I, I love that song growing up. I see my daddy listened to Kenny Rogers a whole lot. My mama, see, daddy had a beard, and his name is Kenny. My real name is Kenneth. Kenny after my daddy. Wow. And daddy had a big full beard, you know. And mama always would go, Kenny, why don't you let your beard get white like kenny rogers because she thought it was sexy and, you know like now my beard is getting white all over and uh i'm like maybe i maybe i am gonna end up looking like kenny rogers before it's all said and done <laughs> lee bryce is roasting <laughs> hey uh talking about that one more thing we do lee here's the uh the mount rushmore of country music and we did this for the first couple of months of the podcast and realized there is no definitive mount rushmore of country music because there's too many i mean too many personal things getting there but what would lee bryce's uh mount rushmore of country music be man uh wow that's tough you know um country music you know it's kind of like you 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 <sighs> buddy um well willie is a, one, one of the first things that comes to my mind uh and i mean it's kind of country but it's also so so crossover and i know y'all know this but so many people probably don't realize that this is probably more rock and roll than most rock and roll bands out there but charlie daniels absolutely um and no doubt. I, when he gets out there's I love him pushing the boundaries. I'm, you know, when I saw him play live for the first time, I thought, I mean, those guitars and all that heavy, I mean, it's heavier than most rock and roll shows. You coach. I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. And then learning those songs for years, but, um, yeah. And then listen uh, to something like saddle tramp and realize like, this is just, there's no jam band that can jam like this band can jam kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. I think, well, I think probably I'd have to stick two heads in one, you know, Hank Sr. and Hank Jr. I mean, I'm such a Hank Jr. fan. And him, he epitomizes, like, kind of the both sides of, you know, like the the mega superstar, kiss my ass guy. But he also had songs like that I actually, my favorite songs of his were country, you know, from Dinosaur to, you know, Major Blues, man, that kind of stuff. I loved it. His voice, people don't realize the range that this this man has and the talent that he has to play every instrument he can put in his hands and his it's mm -hmm. just crazy you know mm -hmm. i mean yeah. he got those two guys 
but his daddy, you know, kind of started it all, really, as far as, you know, especially with in his realm. And then he, he really created Hank Jr. because Hank Jr. was like, well, I, I got to do something different than my daddy because forever he was trying to be – they they wanted yeah. him to be his dad. You know? <clears throat> yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I mean, there's so many – there's so many. Gosh, you know, I, I'm just trying to think of some that wouldn't be the – the the normal thing that you'd say like you know a Waylon and like all those guys that I love but I mean you know another guy Don Williams would be a big one for me just because I could listen to his music his records all day every day and never get tired of them mm-hmm. you know and it was great country music. um so it was so I mean, you unique know, some, what he did oh, and how he sounded was, and how he and the songs were, all of it is just uh, it's just crazy I mean good old so boys like me. Competes I mean, with maybe the greatest song of all time to me. Yeah. What do you do? I mean, you know what I mean? So probably, you know, you know, I'm not sure how many heads you can put on Rushmore these days, yeah. but yeah, there's some, no, that's great. You know, that's a great answer, man. We, uh, I know we got to get you out of here. I, I, thank you for, uh, doing this buddy and spending so much extra time. Sorry. We kept you long and hopefully your wife ain't making you, take out extra garbage or or, or clean out the garage oh, uh, extra actually, because of it or whatever y'all are actually right man i love the thought i love the fact of just being able to hang out and bs man it's it's really fun and to catch up and i've been wanting to catch up anyway justin and, and it's good to see you jr and I, y'all let's do it again if y'all you know if this wasn't too bad we all have me on again we'll do it absolutely let's do it man and hopefully next year we'll we'll be on some festivals or something or hell let's put some more shows together That'd be fun. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm hey, congrats. I'm about to get up too. Yeah. Hey, congrats on uh, the last uh, couple of years, man. Uh, I know they've been great and continued success. And uh, again, thank you. And, and thank you for your friendship and uh, much love. And hopefully we'll see you soon, man. Yes, Have a great sir. holiday season if I don't talk to you before then. Man, I was going to say, y'all too, man. Have a good, uh, man. Have a good time just being at home in December. I'm, so, I'm looking forward to it. If y'all need anything, y'all hit me anytime you know that. Thanks for having Likewise, me. Likewise, brother. All the Same best. Same here. Appreciate you, Lee. Right. Tell everybody we said hello, right. brother. Y'all be safe. Done deal. Y'all too. Later on. Later. Later, buddy. Lee Bryce. Yeah. I mean, what a guy. I mean, just yeah. I mean, he's he's that's why we've all been buddies. You see why like we get along with certain people and why we end up hanging out with them, because we're all kind of the same, you know. Cut from the same cloth, and and once again, I feel like I say this to you every single time we get off with somebody. I feel like I monopolized all the time. No, and you didn't get stop. The, a no, chance to no say way. a word. No way, no <laughs> but, way. And I tell you this: I thought you were going to say the other thing we always say, but it's true, which is not like you monopolizing the time. Is um, what a good person. I mean, even yeah. from his thing, and you know, I know Lee, but I didn't know he was taking that stance like you did with the kids and the stuff and the this, and he really pushed. I didn't know to do that, that either. You know, and I know no social media. I mean, he's got to be the only other artist that don't have right. social media on his phone. I, I've never yeah. heard that from anybody else. And I'm not saying I. I mean, I know he brings his kids on the road. He's a good dad and all that stuff. But I didn't know he was just hands on. And they, you know, I, you just never know. I don't know if maybe his parents live there and t- help with the kids and stuff. You just never know anybody's situation. But him to cut them out of that right. stuff and his, keep his kids in sports and keep them screwed on right. And yeah, I meant to tell him. The only other thing I forgot to tell him was. Uh, uh, about Clemson, he, I, you know, he talked about it. And then let's scurry on the next topic. But uh, uh, <laughs> I know, I know, it's just a ploy for Dabo's just doing this. He's just got to lose a few so it don't break their hearts too bad when he comes on back home here in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move him back in as an assistant after he loses a couple years at Clemson, and then he'll just go and take over for. Hey, on on that Saber. subject though, did you did you hear uh, Saban said in a SEC teleconference? I think maybe two weeks ago. He feels like he's got 10 more years in him. Yeah. yeah. That's what he said. I think he said he'd be maybe 80 at that point because I think totally he's plausible. in his 70s now. He just turned 70 two weeks ago. Okay, there you go. I, yeah, because I think he's he mentioned somebody who he looked up to, and I don't remember if it was his dad or if it was maybe some other coach. I, I don't know. that um, They coached into their 80s, and he's like, I feel you know like I, I can do that too or whatever. Right. So, yeah. I mean, with a steady diet of uh, little Debbie cakes, uh, oatmeal cream pies, and uh, Coke. I mean, you know, I mean, the man and, beat COVID twice in, a, in two days. I mean, he's a machine. Yeah. 
And then, uh, yeah, he didn't get COVID. COVID got Nick Saban. <laughs> yeah, right. He chewed it up, spit it out. Oh, yeah. my gosh. But, it's but like yeah, uh, uh, you could replace any of the Chuck Norris uh, jokes you could replace with Nick Saban. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, po- uh, podcast listeners out there on the mm-hmm. interwebs, y'all send us some memes uh, replacing Nick Saban as um, – uh, Chuck Norris memes, and I'll make sure to share the crap out of those. Hey, want to say real Pretty quick, funny. thanks to everybody for uh, uh, liking and reviewing um, and all the comments I've gotten over the past few weeks from everybody out there. I appreciate y'all doing that. Please continue to. It helps the show grow and uh, continue to keep us on each and every week for you guys. Mm-hmm. been a fun season this season, Just I know mm-hmm. you and I talked about it off air last week on the bus. Man, we've had some great guests. We've met some new people. We've got to catch up with some old friends. Uh, and it's just been a great season. I mean, even with listener interaction, I know I do most of that, and I tell you and I show you the pictures and stuff. Um, of, I showed you the guy with the tattoo this past week. Uh, mm-hmm. Big Rebel Rooster is pretty cool. But um, I talked mm-hmm. to these people. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm glad it keeps rocking. It's been a fun season, even the, it, all the little aspects of it. Yeah, and you shared some really kind comments, um, and I don't I don't know where they came from, but uh, about the podcast – uh, recently, and we we uh, just to reiterate what Jr. said, we do appreciate that, and glad you guys are enjoying it. And um, you know, you know, we've had a guest on for what two, three weeks in a row, and I know there are stretches where we don't have them for two or three weeks or four weeks. And just so you guys are aware, I know that the the folks out there listening and watching who have watched and listened for from the beginning of this thing, we kind of have explained that. Um, you know, this is not meant to be necessarily a, 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 a guest driven podcast. Certainly that's a big part of it, but artists such as myself and Lee and Parker and all these guys, we're all going a hundred miles an hour in a hundred different directions. And it's just hard to nail down people here and there. And so it's going to be like that, you know, with, with different schedules and, you know, we may go a month without guests, but I think we've proven that then we'll give you a month full of great guests. Right. And so, I, you know, and some people like, I'm sure, a certain type of show and others, I'm sure, like another type of show, whether it be all guests, no guests, whatever. And so just just so you know, there's going to continue to be, um, I think, a, a, a great combination of each. Um, yeah. but we don't really know we don't, when we try to st- strategically uh, get guests on when they have something to talk about, whether it be a book or an album or, or whatever. Um, but you know, that, that's just kind of the way it, it works because of not only our schedule, but the schedules of the guests that we, we, we have on. Right, yeah, and uh, and and that goes back to continuing to use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast and leave those reviews uh, and stuff because I'm going to get one of you guys to jump on the podcast with us before the season's over and chop it up with us for a few minutes. So uh, continue to do that, and you win one tickets month. to a show and, and we'll get a trip. You, yep, we'll send you a trip to a show next year. So uh, continue to do that. We appreciate it. I'm Jr. the Handler. It's Justin Moore. Remember always. And I'll do this one now. And we'll give a couple of shout outs here in a minute. But we'll go ahead and get this one out of the way. Uh, this is a public service announcement we've done a few times on here. This goes back uh, in reference to uh, Instagram, Twitter accounts, and all that <clears> fun stuff. If it doesn't have the blue check marks, not JM. If it doesn't have blue check marks, not Lee Bryce. I can probably assure you that none of these artists, uh, or Randy Hauser, or Jamie Johnson, or any of our buddies, or Brantley, or anybody we run with, I can assure you none of these people are uh, um, going to be reaching out to you on separate accounts. If it doesn't have the blue check mark, it's not them. I got this letter was dropped off to us. In well, Hanover. you know for a fact it ain't me or Lee. Yeah, right. Personally doing it. Either way, yeah. you just heard right. it here on the Justin Moore podcast. Yeah, so it, it's not going to be no side. If you know, they're going to send they're going to send pictures and comments and stuff to their uh, uh, social media managers, and they're going to post the things that they would like in a timely manner. So I get this letter from uh, Alyssa that works on our crew. She said somebody put it on the monitor desk side stage before the show. So I, I thought I didn't know if it was a gift or something. Mm. I got it and. Checked it out. Well, I just want to read you a little bit of this, guys, and uh, goes back to don't um, don't trust people on social media. There's uh, there's too much of the scamming going on, and this is a uh, an example of that. Uh, dear Justin, hi. I don't know if you remember me from the date site Scouts on the phone. I'm S A. 
we talked for a while on the phone while I was stuck in bed with my bad shoulder problem. I had a second operation on it. I'm sorry that I couldn't help you out when you needed me. You were telling me that you were getting a divorce with your wife at that time. I, if that was really you I was talking to, I'm sorry. But how are you and the kids? If you just, uh, I'm here at the hotel watching you sing. My husband bought me the tickets. Uh, see you in person to give you a kiss, to show you how much I miss our talks on the phone. I still have What's Up app on my phone. It's still the same. If you want to text me. Um, <clears throat> I will have on a picture wearing to show you what I was wearing. Also send a little gif. Anyway, poor thing. Someone since texting me. Anyway, so someone has scammed this woman into believing, Justin, you had these conversations, extended conversations with her on the phone that you were going to leave Kate mm-hmm. while she was sick with shoulder, mm-hmm. shoulder surgery on some dating app site stuff. So, guys, this is what can happen. That was obviously sorry. Um, ma'am, but that was not Justin, and I can't believe people scam people like this. So everybody out there that listens, and you know anybody that does any of these apps and stuff, or if you just know someone who's uh, maybe doing this kind of stuff, they're just lonely. Talk to them and ask them if they've been doing any that, if they, you know, this kind of stuff. They're on any of those apps because, like Lee and them said, these things are just terrible, and this is what can happen. I mean, this I, surely, hopefully, no money got exchanged or gifts or anything <clears throat> illegal went down um, because this is how quick and easy someone can get scammed and break someone's home up and cost them money and, and, and headache and then not and then also drive away people like Justin and Lee from even wanting to do social media because of this kind of crap. So I just well, want to yeah, say... Just uh, manipulating people in their minds yeah. at, is just horrible. I mean, it's just scum of the earth type stuff. And... and I don't know what anybody gain. I don't know what they get from it. If they get a kick out of it, if it's, you know, if it's funny to them, or if, like you said, they're trying to actually, uh, if it's for financial gain. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't think that way. So I don't know. But, um, I, I think what you're kind of alluding to, which we've talked about a number of times, be very careful on s- social media about everything i mean just it's i guess i don't is that kind of in a nutshell that's what i would say i mean it's just so unfortunate just y'all everybody know you know that's if it sounds extreme and unrealistic it more than likely is it's like if it sounds too good to be true it probably is so just i wouldn't be talking with anybody on this stuff because like lee said those are strangers you don't know those 1500 strangers his son got the one day all these people are strangers y'all and they they they're not looking out for your best interest you know whatever that is nine times out of ten it's it's uh, 99 times out of 100 it's somebody up to no good or somebody trying to dupe you or take advantage of you so just steer clear and if you have family members that are that are you know lonely or bored or just need some want to hang out well, go hang out with them make sure they're not doing this kind of stuff you know give give everybody in your family a call from time to time check in on each other stuff's awful i hope uh, i hope this lady um hears this somehow through the grapevine and um knows that, that was not justin and, and pl- please stop doing that and if you're married <clears throat> your husband you shouldn't be on dating apps and texting people so another thing right there uh y'all i mean 10 commandments not hard to deal with there that's easy um so just do the right thing everybody don't be hey i would e- i would even issue a I don't, it's not a challenge but like like lee and i have talked to just talked about like how I don't know how much happier we are not to have social media on our phone. Try it for a week. Yeah. Try it for a week and see what you think. You yeah. may you may go, dang, that was pretty nice. You may or miss get, it, and if you yeah. and if you do, then go back to it. Whatever. But hell, yeah. give it a whirl. You might yeah. love it. Or just or yeah, or just get down to one. Do one. Don't do any of these things where you're talking with people on there. If, like it started out great. I remember MySpace back in the day. It was how you found out about shows. You know, you could promote shows on that way. So people know where you're playing and stuff. And then even Facebook. I mean, that's where I go to look at my friends' kids and stuff. You know, and what all my buddies dressed mm-hmm. up for Halloween and what my cousins are doing. I never get to see. Uh, but the other stuff just gets extreme. I can tell you, I've been on that TikTok for what a couple of weeks now. That stuff is the devil, buddy. I promise you, that's too much. I don't know how they <laughs> filter it from other people and stuff. But, like, you just never know what you're going to scroll up and see, and it is extreme. I don't know if there's a way I can put some PG ratings or something, but half the stuff I see, nobody needs to see. Half the stuff on there is illegal. (laughs) 
I mean, people should be to jail <laughs> and stuff from other countries. I mean, I mean, you just scrolling up next, you know, it's somebody at a wet market in Vietnam or somewhere doing. I mean, with just obscene stuff, man, crazy stuff, or people doing surgery on um, people. It's just weird stuff. So anyway, do something else. It, it's caught me, like Lee said. I've wasted five, ten minutes total in the last two weeks on it, and that's 10 I ain't ever going to get back. So I may be out of the uh, TikTok game here by the end of this afternoon. So, uh, But, yeah, that's like Justin said, hell, give it a try. Take a week off. Take a break. Go outside, you know. But uh, I just wanted to get that out there because we I had gotten that letter this past weekend. So, everybody, if it doesn't have a blue check mark, it's not JM. And if it's me, you know, I'm just going to BS with you. I ain't asking you for nothing. None of these guys and gals. Uh, celebrity type folks are going to be asking you for nothing and if they are you need to send a message to their management and tell them they need some help because something's obviously wrong uh anyway on the next thing i will say on a, on, a, on a friendly note there on some fa- uh, mailbag stuff i got uh i want to say oh while we're talking about the braves want to give a shout out to my buddies uh, duncan and hunter on the climb the ladder podcast um they uh, they re-shot some stuff where i talked with them earlier this year about the braves uh possibly get, having a good run later this year which uh, luckily came to fruition. Uh, y'all check those called guys it, out. Called you know, your shot? Yeah, yeah partially. I, did, I gave you know I left it kind of vague, but it was close. Uh, so y'all go back and listen to that episode if you want to, but check those guys out. The guys out, they have a fun little baseball podcast called Climb the Ladder. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my buddy uh, Chris here at Beats Beer and Bonfires. He sends me some questions, does stuff. He sent us some of these shirts, just. Uh, but there, nice. it's a cool. He has a cool site. He shares stuff around. You know, it's uh, it's basically. Uh, it's a blog supporting uh, artists who continue to make quality country music without shitting on the mainstream just for clout kind of stuff. It's kind of like, you know, no need downing anybody. It just promotes stuff. So I think he's got a good thing there and a uh, nice guy. So I want to give him a shout-out for sending us that. Y'all check them out. As always, thanks to our buddies Whiskey Riff, uh, Morning Hangover, all those guys and gals that, that, that post and do stuff for us yeah. on the socials, uh, the, the kind words they do. Um, and I guess we need to talk about just – we've got some shows coming up as this drops – We've got shows uh, this weekend. Friday, this should come out Thursday. The next night we'll be in Maricopa, Arizona, which is uh, about an hour south of Phoenix, uh, doing a show. Uh, that will be on Friday the 5th. Saturday the 6th will be in Laughlin, Nevada. Uh, and Sunday the 7th will be in St. Louis Obispo, California. Uh, then we've got to make a trek back across the country um, to play a show in uh, St. Augustine, Florida on Thursday the 11th of November. Then we'll be... Biloxi, Mississippi on Friday the 12th, and last but not least, Lake Charles, Louisiana on the 13th, uh, just like the band song. Um, <clears throat> yep. So, so, that's so what it's got coming crazy. Up. I mean, why, why not close the year with going as far as you can to one side of the country to the as far as you can to the other side of the country. Yeah, I mean, and, and not that's, and not that's go that's Lake fitting. Charles. Yeah, and not go Lake Charles, Biloxi, St. Augustine. No, go past the first one to go back to the last one. <laughs> yeah, why? Why? I mean, why not? Uh, it's yeah. fitting, but uh, you know, we we kid, but it, it has been great to be back out on the road, and we oh yeah, obviously appreciate it and don't take take it for granted, but. We got to fill time on this podcast, so it is kind of funny when you look at things like that. But, and then we'll be off. Uh, we have, I think, we have one show booked, so we'll be off beginning with the twelfth, I believe, of this month, or maybe 14th. the eighteenth, fourteenth. Okay, something yeah. like that. Yeah, fourteenth of this month, we'll be off. Maybe through February, with the exception of one show, or maybe a couple in December, and maybe one or two in February. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, we'll drop more of those dates as like as they get as they get confirmed um for So next we'll year. we'll have a we'll get we'll have a good good long break to to recharge our batteries and um hopefully next year is a little more normal with travel and and those types of things for sure. Um but uh Yeah. Looking forward to those shows but also looking forward to getting back home and uh it's basketball season here yep. you know we, we had yep. our last softball tournament this past weekend uh didn't play well probably the worst tournament we've played all year but i think Ooh. the kids were exhausted i know we the coaches were fatigued um it was a long good but long year and so happy to uh transition to basketball now i'll start coaching you know, all three girls in basketball and that's fun it's a little less pressure than at, at this age uh, basketball than it is uh, softball um, but uh, looking forward to that and then Ella just had her last football game and I have to say this I'm super proud of her she <clears throat> they played in the the 
conference championship game, um, which is the first time in years that we've been in it, peewee wise. And so we got beat by uh by a team that quite honestly is just better than we were. But Ella had like five, six tackles uh last night nice. and she had a forced fumble. Awesome. So yeah, it was pretty neat. Play in the wood. Pretty pretty neat. So um really proud of her for that and then she probably you know she may not ever get a chance to play football again because she's in the sixth grade and that was now she goes to junior high so that's out so that's probably out for her because she's so focused on basketball and softball but she had a good time and um you know they had a good season so it was she ended ended her career on top yeah some tackles and a forced fumble for sure defensive monster over there Pretty neat, and then uh, you know, uh, moving forward with sports stuff, we touched on it with um, with Lee there, but um, <clears throat> you know, the Braves obviously got out to a, a lead in Game Five at home, chance to close out the World Series. Just their 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 pitching did not hold up that game. Um, I would think that they would have Max Freed going tonight, which is their second guy because our ace went out, Morton. Um, in game, is it game one? Yeah, it was game one of the World Series with a a broken bone in his lower leg. <clears throat> was his fib, fib, fibula? Broken yeah, fibula. And so Max Freed uh, lost in game two. Uh, he was the, the the losing pitcher in game two, but really wasn't his fault. If you remember that game, um, I watched the whole game. Uh, he. He pitched pretty well for the most part, um, but we had two or three silly errors, and that's not typical in the pros. And and so we just some silly stuff gave up some some unearned runs, and so hopefully he comes out and dominates tonight. That's my my hope. I you know a game it's tough enough in a World Series game, whether it be game one or two or six to 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 win in some other team stadium but you go in there game seven and it's you, you know how difficult that is it just it just yeah. magnifies the difficulty or amps it up even more so so hopefully they can come out and put some runs on the board for him and he can um, pitch the game of his life tonight that'd be great yeah, no doubt. Hopefully, by the next time we're uh, we're talking about this, it's already done deal, and we've we've got a we've got the. It'll be a done deal one way or the other. One way or another. Hope it, hopefully it's in our favor and yep. not uh, not for them. Mm-hmm. We did say we talked about it on the other week. We'd love to see Dusty Baker get one, but just not this year. Not this year. Um, next year, t- maybe next year. Yeah, and th- talking about next year too, just that talking about you know getting a little downtown. That's another thing too. We've got to retool this podcast. You know, we're going we're going to do a few new things for next year. We're going to get some new guests lined up. We have some new stuff to talk about. It's going to be fun. I was looking at those dates, just yeah. February we moved the Jackson Mississippi show to Wednesday the sixteenth of February, and then we actually just announced uh, a Billy Bob's date, February twenty fifth. We're going to be back in the stockyards of Fort Worth, Texas, yep. at Billy Bob's. Excited about that. Maybe we'll go hat and boot shopping and uh, have a big old time on a. Texas Friday night. Not a whole lot more enjoyable place to play for me and you than, than Billy That's, Bob's. I mean, it's about know, as good as it gets for us. And I have to say this. This is more inside <clears throat> baseball. There was some other dates discussed uh, during that time that came across the board. And we looked at them and we're just, just not talking about them. It was just some extreme, extreme stuff to be doing this time of the year. And for once, I guess I guess maybe they, they finally listened. We were like, guys, yeah. can we please start the year with something just a little more reasonable to get the cobs worked out, make sure every, we got everything we need, make sure everything's working again, make sure, you know, this and that, a little, little something closer to home, a little better weather, this and that. So – Jackson, Mississippi, sure. and Fort Worth in February. That's, that's about the best we've ever had as far as uh, rallying the first it. couple shows, you know. They're both about four hours from me. <laughs> I, I mean. Because, you know, two years ago we tried to go way uh, <laughs> way up the, in the in northwest, the, the first run, and made one show, then had two get iced out, and then everybody got sick. This was right before COVID shut everybody down. But buses mm-hmm. getting stuck in the ice and had to cancel shows. And I mean, it's just a long yeah. ways to get off there. And um, I just think it's better to, you know, Start a little closer to home, you know, or at least the first weekend. 
get the cobwebs worked out. Make sure the buses work right. Make sure we work right. You know, all that yep. fun stuff. So exactly. That's going to be fun. And then, yeah, we'll retool the podcast and rock that. I don't know about you, but I'm going to – I've got to go in and get some lunch. Sharice made gumbo last night, son. A big oh, old pot I'm so of gumbo. Jealous. Chicken and sausage gumbo. A big old thing of potato salad. I'm pumped. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I'll be eating it, eating it every day till, till I see you. Yeah, I got to go get some radio work done. And we were going to get to some Q&A today, but uh, – we got. We only thought we were going to get Lee for for thirty minutes, and we got him for almost an hour. So, yep. Uh, thank you again to him for coming on. Thank you again to Parker for coming on. And odds are, next week we probably won't have a guest. So I would suggest that we save the Q and A for next week, and we do a big Q and A session next week, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, we'll see how it works. Um, we'll everybody stay updated on that. I know you and I are going to be traveling on the road, so we'll just have to see how that works. Okay. Um, when we normally would record so slight chance we might take take next week off also so okay um everybody just listen out and go to uh the instagram page for the justin moore podcast if you're still on social media after listening to this uh <laughs> and uh, and uh follow the justin moore podcast instagram pages we'll keep updates on there and i'm going to send stuff to cody to post on there um as we go along as well you can find all the updates there um and you can go to justinmoremusic.com to get all the tour dates that are that are out now you can go check out justin's new music you can see uh everything you need to know about the podcast from there uh merch all the fun stuff we've got going on on justin's website you can go to jrthehandler.com uh sign up for that check out some merch i also have all the links to all our videos uh from the podcast and and good stuff like that um, don't interact with Justin Moore if it doesn't have the blue check mark by Justin Cole Moore's name. Um, do, I will not interact with you and ask for no money either, so y'all don't do that, remember. But please do uh, use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast when you are on social media, because um, and we sure appreciate it. Remember to let, like, rate, and review the show anywhere you listen to it, and we're going to pick one lucky winner uh, to come on the podcast and then come to a show next year. So uh, y'all remember to do that. Uh, and I guess until uh, further notice, this has been – Season 3, Episode 36 of the Justin Moore Podcast. I want to say thanks again to our brother Lee Bryce for coming on, chopping it up with us, uh, spending some time. Love Lee, his bunch. Y'all go check him out at the show sometime, download all his new music. Um, and again, from last week's guest, Parker McCullum, thanks for coming on, young brother. Big career ahead of that guy. And uh, that's about all I got. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week or the next week. We don't know. But either way, it'll be fun when we do see you. <laughs> That's right. Stay safe, everybody. See y'all next week. Or the next. <laughs> Cheers. Hey, guys. Today's podcast is sponsored by Bobcat Company. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels. Uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 28, Nasty Habit. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. Corinthians 10, 13. I started smoking in my very early teens. By the time I reached my late 20s, I was smoking four to five packs of cigarettes a day. Every cold I had was aggravated by the massive amount of smoke I was putting into my lungs. It got to the point that every slight infection became a chronic bout of sore throats, coughing, stuffy head and chest, and all over flu-like feeling. I got up morning, one morning in 1968 after years of blaming my condition on anything but my nicotine habit, and I finally admitted to myself that my problem was the 80 to 100 cigarettes I was smoking each day. I made the bold statement, I will never smoke another cigarette. Later in the morning when my lungs started loosening up and my breath breathing got easier, I truly regretted my statement. I wanted to light up worse than anything else I could think of. I constantly reached into my shirt pocket for that pack of smokes that for 15 years wasn't there anymore. But a vow was a vow. I stuck it out through the rabid craving and in about three weeks it was all over. My appetite for cigarettes was gone and the habit was broken. I have not smoked another cigarette since that morning in 1968. What a blessing. You can overcome a nasty habit one minute, one step, one day at a time, facing down each trial as it appears. Let's all make the day count. <laughs>